Let's take a closer look at the Skywatcher SynScan AZ Go2 series of telescopes. This range of telescopes has become increasingly popular uh, since its launch uh, around about a year ago. Um, of all the telescopes we sell, this range probably accounts for something like 20% of our sales. So this really has become an extremely popular telescope. It's not surprising as well when you, when you look at the specification. Even the little baby starter scope here uses the standard uh, SynScan handset. That's a handset with over 40,000 targets uh, pre-programmed into it. That's planets, nebulae, galaxies, stars, constellations. It does more than actually find the star for you uh, or the planet for you and incidentally a little bit later on we're actually going to show you this um, when it gets dark underneath the stars and how that handset actually works. That's coming up a, a little bit later on. But the basic equipment on all of the uh, SynScan AZ GoTo's is, is fundamentally the same. The one exception is the 70mm uh, model, that's the baby one. That's got a slightly different tripod and a slightly lighter uh, duty motor unit and it's really only designed for carrying this quite light 70mm scope. But all the other f uh, functions that we're going to talk about are exactly the same. We've got the same dual axis motor system, we've got the same 800 times uh, slewing speed, that's 800 times sidereal slewing speed, and the same play uh, factor. They really are great fun to use. They all come equipped with uh, finders, all with good focusers on, and all the whole series come with two eyepieces. You get a 25mm eyepiece and a 10mm eyepiece. So every scope we're going to show you is in effect a complete kit with everything you need uh, to go. In fact, the only other thing you'll actually have to buy um, are the eight AA batteries that it is actually powered by. Uh, other than that, all you're going to need is a, clear, uh, is a clear night. Let's just do a bit of a roundup now of all the different models and pointing them out. So this is the baby. This is the 70 millimeter um, refractor. Um, a great starter scope, good for planets, good for just about everything. So this is a, a great one to start with and obviously it's the, it's the one that comes in uh, at the lowest price. So this is a great place to start. Next up is the 114. Uh, that's referring to the 114 millimeter aperture uh, across there. Um, 500 millimeter focal length. This is a nice little Newtonian reflector. Very easy to use, nice short kind of 500 mil focal length. It'll be a great little scope for finding your way around the sky. Again, of course, we've still got that fantastic um, SynScan handset. And incidentally, there's a nice little feature here of the uh, handset hanger that clips onto any of the legs. All of the standard models, so all of them up from the 114, have that as a, a standard feature. You've got a nice little um, accessory accessory tray in the, uh, in the middle here as well on, on this model. I don't know whether you can get a look at the uh, main mirror there, uh, Drew. Can you bring the camera in a bit closer and see that? You should be able to see the primary mirror down at the bottom of the tube there. We've got a secondary at the top of the tube and that kicks the image out uh, at 90 degrees to the side where we obviously insert the eyepiece into the eyepiece holder here and the focuser. Nice, smooth, easy to use little instrument. Ideal as a starter scope. Next on the list is the 130. Very similar design. It's a Newtonian again, but as you can see, really quite a bit bigger. It'll take eyepieces up to two inch. Uh, we've got a very large uh, eyepiece holder on there. Um, a more substantial finder. It's a 30 millimeter finder. Again, the 130 is referring to the aperture. And again, as you can see, it's a, uh, it's a Newtonian scope. I don't know if you can see that again, Drew. Get a look at the primary down at the bottom of the tube there. One of the features really of all the SIN scans is build quality. They're really nicely made. You know, you can actually see they've got a quite solid structure. It's very pleasing, when you, especially when you give consideration of their price. It really is a nicely put together little telescope. Moving along, um, this is a really interesting scope um, and very unusual. Um, it's the 102 refractor. Um, all the same standard features again, that same tripod, the same handset holder, that larger finder that you get on the, on the 130. But this time it's a short focus refractor, 102mm, offering a 500mm focal length. But the great thing is uh, it's equipped with a 45 degree um, diagonal. I don't know if you can see that there, Drew, the 45mm diagonal just at the back there. Now that makes it ideally suited for making terrestrial observations. So here we've got an absolutely great um, astronomy 
telescope um, that can also make terrestrial observations as well. So if you've got a wildlife interest or you've got a, you've got a good view to point the telescope at, here's a terrific solution, a little bit of both worlds. Terrific on the astronomy with the SynScan handset, but also able to give you good terrestrial views as well of wildlife targets, shipping, that kind of thing. Now we're getting into the more serious stuff. This is the 102, and this is a Maksutov Cassegrain scope. I don't know if you can see the differences in the design there. Straight away, it looks a little bit different to the other models. We've got this secondary reflector in the uh, center of the Maksutov um, corrector there. Notice it looks actually quite a bit smaller than the others. It really looks like the baby of the bunch. But don't be confused. There's actually a 1300 millimeter focal length packed into this Z folded optical tube. The optical pathway is corrected as it comes in through the corrector, comes down the tube uh, onto the primary, the main primary mirror, goes back up the tube again to the secondary. Because the secondary is actually curved on the back of the Maksutov corrector, it actually gives the next reflection a big kick and actually makes it quite a bit longer. And that adds to the focal length of the instrument, even though it's still packed into this little tube. Straighten all that out, uh, like one of those kind of old-fashioned rulers that you unfold, and you've got 1,300 millimeters of uh, focal length packed into this really tiny little telescope. It's a great feature. It makes it absolutely ideal for looking at planets. You've got bags of focal length here. That tends to mean that uh, even though it's using exactly the same eyepieces as you get in the other models, those same eyepieces are going to deliver a lot more magnification here. And this is an ice-cold optical system, very high contrast, absolutely superb for looking at planets and the moon and that kind of thing. Can't recommend it too highly. That's the 102 Maksutov Cassegrain. And finally, we come to the big daddy of the series, the 127 Maksutov Cassegrain. This really is a big scope. I know it, again, looks like a short tube, but it's got the same features as the 102. That's an optically folded uh, system. The light comes in uh, past the Maksutov corrector, comes down the tube onto the primary, back up uh, onto the secondary. And remember, it's got this curved secondary there on the back of the Maksutov uh, corrector. That curve, uh, that dished shape um, secondary gives the light an extra kick as it comes back down the tube and gives it a little bit of extra focal length. Net result is if you straighten all this out, straighten that Z-fold optical path out, you've got a full 1.5 meters of focal length here. So don't picture this as a, as a little five inch, uh, this little short tube. See it as a big 1.5 meter focal length telescope on, uh, uh, on, on this mounting here. All the same great features as the other SIN scans. That's the handset with the 40,000 targets on it, the finder, two great eyepieces, but coupled with an absolutely superb 127 millimeter um, diffraction limited optical system. Uh, again, an ice cold optical system, bags of contrast, beautiful resolution, absolutely superb for looking at planets, the moon, brighter stellar targets and, and, and some of the brighter deep sky targets as well. A serious intermediate telescope, um, a big step up from a basic starter scope, the 127. Um, when it gets dark, uh, in a little while, we'll get the handset going and show you how that superb computer system actually functions.